Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little. I'm here today with the 35th episode of WeeklyPokerHand.com, where today I'm going to be going over a hand I played in the $25,000 buy-in World Poker Tour main event that was at Bellagio. Uh, the, my opponent in this hand is a young kid who seems European and you know, generally it seems like he knows what he's doing. He seems like a young online player that... I don't know if he like wanted WPT to get into the tournament or maybe he wanted a satellite or something, but you know, he was here, he was here to play, he was certainly not scared. So let's check out this hand. We have Ace King and the cutoff. So I raised to six hundred out of the hundred thousand chip sack. This is very early in day one. We all started with a hundred thousand chips. And seat two, the young kid calls. He checks the flop, and right here I like to bet eight hundred. I think that you need to make a continuation bet here most of the time. You really don't want a hand like 6-5 to realize any equity. And also, if say I do check back the flop, and then he bets the turn. If I call, then he bets the river, I just sort of have to fold. So if you check back here, you're setting yourself up for a lot of difficult turn and river situations. So I think you're better off just betting. If you get check raised on the flop, you can just get out of the way. Because obviously you're, you have very little equity against most check raising ranges. Uh, because he's either going to have a draw of some sort which is the only hands you're good against, or he's going to have a queen or a jack most of the time, in which case you're not in great shape. So if we do bet and get check raised, we're going to fold. But I bet 800 and he does elect to call. So what do we think about his check calling range? I think his check calling range is going to be made up of a lot of weakish draws, like maybe king 10 and 10-9. Ten, I think it's going to be some hands like a queen or a jack, and the thing is, I don't really think it's going to be a flush draw that often. The way you get value out of position with a flush draw is by check raising and then betting the turn and then betting the river. That's that's the standard line that most people, especially like young European players, are going to take with a flush draw. And and also with, with their good draws. So maybe even something like King-10. So I think when my opponent check calls the flop, either as something like Ace-King, Ace-10, King-10, King-9, 10-9, or something like a Jack or maybe a Queen. Uh, I'm not too sure how I would play a queen. Some players always check raise. Some people always check call. I'm kind of in the check call camp. I think that's probably the best line, but that's not how a lot of players are. <laughs> so, anyways, on the turn, I'm just going to go ahead and check it back. And my plan is to actually call a lot of river bets. And sure enough, on the river, he does bet 1,600. And so when he bets 1,600 here, we have to think, okay, how... What are the gut shot draws looking like here? If he has something like ace-10, we beat it. If he has king-10, we beat it. 10-9, we beat it. So basically, we beat all of the draws he could have in his range, especially since I already discounted the fact that he probably doesn't have a flush draw because no good player check calls a flush draw out of position. Super deep stack. It's just not a good play. Um, the real question here is, would he bet a jack? If he, if he will bet a jack, then I think you should probably fold ace-king because then his range is just going to be very wide. Actually, let me pull up Poker Stove here. Let's give us Ace-King. Let's type in the board. And now let's type in all the hands we think he will bet. So the question is, will he bet... Um, Ace Queen, certainly. He probably would have three bet that though. So I'm just gonna only leave in some combinations of that. Actually let's just uh leave in some off suited combinations. Maybe half of those. Let's put in Ace Jack. He may bet half of those. King Queen, I think that's possible. Slightly discounted. Uh flushes I think are unlikely. King ten well ace ten king ten ten nine and king nine. I think he'll bet all of those. And so if this is his ri river value betting range, let's also assume maybe he has queen nine suited in his range. Let's give him queen nine offsuit just to make it even worse for me. If we give him all of those hands, you'll see I have about 52% equity. 51% equity. So now if we start adding in more jack hands that are reasonable, 
that he will possibly value bet. You'll see my equity starts to drop, but even then, we're still on tape. And the reason we're in such a good shape is because he has a lot, a lot, a lot of bluff hands. Let's add in some more jack hands just to make it really bad for me. See where we have to stop calling. So here we have 30, uh, 39%, and given the pot odds, we only have to win 33, uh, sorry, we have to win 25% of the time. So we have to figure out what he has to be betting in order for me to have 25% equity. Let's add in a bunch of queens. Really, there aren't too many queens we could even have. <laughs> what it boils down to here is that I have the best hand virtually every time. Let's pretend I keep bluffs with uh, pocket twos and fours. Let's throw those in. As you guys can see, it's going to be really tough for me to get down to 25% equity here. So, all things considered, I think we have an extraordinarily easy call with Ace King, assuming we know he's not going to check, or we assuming we think he's going to check raise with a flush draw, basically every time. And again, I do think that's going to be the case. And I think he's always going to check raise his monster hands as well. If he does have Queen Jack, he's going to check raise. If he has, I guess there aren't really too many monsters here. Um, if, so yeah, whenever he check calls, I think his range is going to be mostly draws and maybe some weak made hands. I'm not even sure he will bet the weak made hands on the flop. Or on the river, I'm sorry. Let's go through here and take out all the jack hands. Just to see what we're looking at. If he's not betting a jack on the river, ch if he's checking in instead hoping to do induce a bluff, uh, you'll see that my equity, again, is excellent. 41%. So, I mean, I, I think right here this is just about the, the easiest no-brainer call you could possibly make. And the thing is that most opponent or most players will actually fold hands like Ace King. If he knows you're going to be calling with Ace King, he certainly should not be bluffing very often. So always pay attention, figure out what your opponents are doing, and make make simple calls. You know, you can go through his range, figure out how you do against that range, and if you beat the vast majority of it, like we do here, it's a pretty easy call. So I do call, and he quickly mucks his hand, and that's that. Uh, one, one thing also worth mentioning is that if you do decide to call a guy in situations like this, they'll often slow down against you for the rest of the day, or they'll become a maniac trying to get their money back. So it's always important to pay attention and figure out what your opponent is going to do. And if you think, for example, he's just going to tighten up, then you can proceed to run him over for the rest of the day. And even if you lose the hand, it's not that big of a deal, because now your opponent knows you are capable of looking him up, and he's just not going to mess with you. And that's sort of the goal. You want the aggressive players to not mess with you too much. Um, the only way this call would actually be bad, I think, is if he starts having a bunch of hands like... A, a, a lot of the pairs. Like, say he bets sevens on the river. Or say he bets... Um, I don't know. There's, there's really just no, It's really tough for this call to ever be bad. If he bets, like, ace three on the river, if he has somehow king three, four three, five three... 3-2. If he has those and bets them, it could be bad. But it's really, really, really tough. So that's that for this episode. Pretty easy call down spot based on our opponent's range. And yeah, that's that. If you have any questions or comments about this episode or any others, please feel free to let me know. This has been Jonathan Little for WeeklyPokerHand.com. Thanks for watching.